The story takes place in Baiyin City, Gansu Province. Baiyin is a prefecture-level city located in the northwest part of China, surrounded by Kilian Mountains. With a history dating back over 2,000 years, Baiyin was once prosperous and has served as an important transportation and trade hub, connecting the northern and southern regions of China, which was midway of the Silk Road. The name Baiyin literally translates to silver in Chinese, also reflecting the city's historical significance as a major mining center. It used to be a mining city in Mao's China that doesn't mine anymore due to the depletion of mineral resources. People lost their mining jobs and were forced to move to other cities in search of work, and the population slowly decreases. So frankly speaking, it looks kind of dreary now. From the year of 1988 to 2004, more than 10 women were raped and killed brutally. Among those victims, the youngest is just eight years old. The murderer cruelly committed the crime, raped most of them, and cut off their body parts like breasts and vaginas. He successfully escaped police arrest over a decade, leaving a mystery to the public. This serial murder case was one of China's most famous unsolved cases and become a nightmare for local residents. Thus, he was given the name Jack the Ripper. The first case happened in May 26, 1988. On that day, the police receive a crime report. As soon as they got the report, they immediately rushed to the crime scene to start the investigation. The crime happened in a residential building and the victim is a woman whose surname is Bai, meaning white in English. People often called her little white shoes because of her beauty and fondness of wearing white shoes. The police was shocked by the terrifying crime scene when they arrived. The victim was lying on the ground with her neck being cut open, almost severed. The lower body was naked. Her top clothes were almost taken off above the chest. A palm-like blood stain was founded on her inner thigh, and the investigators discovered 26 wounds on the body totally According to the investigation, it suggests that the woman was brutally killed in the wake of getting raped. The murderer is very likely to be a psychopath. Usually, it only takes one or two stabs to end someone's life, but the victim got more than 20 knife wounds. What's more than that is the body was severely damaged, being almost beheaded, indicating that the murderer had literally lost his mind. The place was apparently cleaned after the crime. Although the footprints were left, they were not clear enough for the police to identify. Perhaps it was due to moving around while his cleaning up the crime scene. The murderer was so calm during the killing that he didn't run away and chose to stay cleaning up his traces. Neighbors also reported that they had not seen any strangers, so it can be concluded that the murderer may be someone that the victim knows. Although the scene had been cleaned, vital evidences were still left. Clear fingerprints were discovered on the bloodstain on the victim's thigh and the door handle. The local police soon brought police dogs to assist from another city, which is 60 kilometers away. But unfortunately, the dogs had been faint and numb after the transportation and couldn't be of much help. Despite of the clues the murderer had left, the case still remained unsolved at last. Six years later, on the July 27, 1994, a female worker who served at electricity board was found killed in dormitory. It's kind of similar to the first victim. The woman's throat was almost cut off too. More than 30 knife wounds were found on the body. It's worth noting that the electricity board in China belongs to the state and the state-owned enterprise offered their employees place to live. Often they were arranged to live in a residential complex, which also was the property of the enterprise. So unlike the first case, it had many guards at the entrance of the residential complex. It was kind of difficult for someone to commit a crime without thorough planning. The place that the women got killed actually was not far from the entrance of the complex, and the cell gate of her dormitory directly faced the road. There were many passengers walking around. It's easy to notice someone who is suspicious. But even under these circumstances, the tragedy still happened and the murderer still got uncaught. On 1998, January 16th, a 29-year-old female was also dead because of a neck injury and stabs on the body. She was totally naked, but unlike the previous cases, both of her ears were chopped off and palm-sized scalp of her was missing. This is the first time that the murderer took away body parts when he left. From what he had done, we can see that he became increasingly crazy because of multiple successful escapes. Every woman in the Bayan city started to worry about themselves, and it caused huge panic and discomfort to the local residents. 
The police immediately started the investigation, but it surprised everyone that another murder case was reported just after three days. The victim was treated in the same way, being cut off the body parts. And the incident happened to occur on the other side of the road from the police station. The distance was no more than 50 meters. The murderer seems to laugh at the police's inability. It's quite ironic that the dead body from three days ago was still warm and a new case was about to be handled. The serial cases happened in Bayin made the local residents begin to panic, and the news of serial killer had already been spread widely. There once had been a long time when the women are living in fears to go out alone for work or school, especially at night. They only felt safe if there is a male or friends as their companions. Schools in Bayin City even had rescheduled their school time to make sure that the students can get home before it got too late. This action tried to prevent the students from getting any harm from the serial killer. Generally, everyone felt in danger in Bayin City. The murderer had already committed four crimes, but there was no progress in finding the murderer at all. The murderer showed no signs of stopping and the slaughter still continued. In the same year of 1998, on July 30th, another one was found murdered. The victim was a young girl, only eight years old. Her mother is a classmate of the sister-in-law of the victim from the second case, who was an employee of the electricity board. Her mother was in deep shock when she heard that her classmate's relative got murdered. But she couldn't imagine that four years later, her daughter would die in the same way. It was a seemingly peaceful afternoon in the summer. The young girl was enjoying her holiday alone at home while her mother was at work. Earlier in the morning, the mother did bring her daughter to the workplace, but she didn't want to bother her co-worker too much, so she decided to leave her daughter at home and go to work in the afternoon alone. Before leaving home, she was considering if she would lock the door to prevent strangers from going inside. She didn't do so, just in case there were any emergencies like fire might happen, allowing her daughter to escape from it. So she put her daughter to bed for a noon nap and then left. When it reached 6 o'clock p.m., the mother came back from work. Right after she opened the door, she instantly sensed something suspicious. All the curtains were closed and there was almost no light inside the room. She still remembered that she didn't close the curtains before she left. She also found a cup on the table, thinking that maybe someone had visited, and her daughter offered a cup of water to the visitor. The mother started to call her daughter's name, but got no response. The home was compact, with just a television set, a bed, and a wardrobe. She checked all the places in her home and couldn't believe her eyes when she found her girl in a wardrobe curling up with no sign of breathing. The girl's face was already bluish and her neck was strangled with a belt tightly. The mother couldn't accept the truth and collapsed onto the ground with great grief. Her father asked the doctor if his daughter had been sexually violated and the doctor replied that there was no evidence of such trauma during the autopsy. But autopsy reported revealed that the girl was naked below the waist and her vagina is bruised and torn. The sperm of the murderer were also left in the vagina, indicating that the girl had suffered from severe sexual assault. With the intent to protect her father's feelings, the police didn't say what exactly the psychopath had done to her daughter. The little girl was very adorable. She was very good at singing and dancing and was chosen to be the lead dancer in her dancing class. The loss of the child had broken the family, so they decided to raise another child to relieve their pain. It wasn't long before they had another daughter, and they chose to conceal the fact that their eldest daughter had been dead. The murderer is still at large. On July 30th, 1998, November 20th, 2000, May 22nd, 2001, and February 5th, 2002, he killed four more women by the same method. From 1988 to 2002, 11 women in total were brutally killed. With so much evidence in hand, including footprints, fingerprints, sperm, and hair, the police were meant to capture the suspect. But how come the police couldn't find the outlaw after so many years? People start to doubt the ability of the police. While in fact the local police spared no effort in finding the murderer, the reason why he was was still uncaught because all the clue they had cannot be matched in the criminal database and there was no witness who can identify the suspect. Genetic technology was introduced to the public security system in order to solve the case in 1990. This technique was quite novel when it was launched in China at first, and many remote regions in China didn't have the necessary equipment or expertise to use it independently, including Bayin City. 
As a result, the samples were required to transfer to the laboratory in a large city, which was extremely inconvenient. But the inconvenience doesn't stop the police in Baiyin. In order to find the murderer, all male residents in Baiyin City were required to hand in their fingerprints and DNA samples. More than 100,000 fingerprint samples were taken, but none of them was matched. Even those who were going out on a business trip were also urged to come back to provide their samples. The investigator analyzed the common features of the cases, making discoveries that most of the female victims were murdered at home and were dressed in red, suggesting that the murderer might have a special taste of choosing prey. It is also likely that the murderer is a delivery person or a postman, as he knocked open the door and committed his crimes without being witnessed. All the residents in Bayin were on edge all day. People started to organize voluntarily, together with the local police to patrol the roads 24 hours a day. Female residents kept their red clothes in wardrobes and never dressed them outside. The unknown murderer was also wanted. The posters were everywhere in Bayin City with 200,000 won as a reward. All the measures had been taken, but who he was still remained a mystery. According to what police had in hand, the murderer was supposed to be a young man whose age ranged from 17 to 24, medium figure, long-term residence in Baiyin or neighboring regions, also a pervert suffering from erectile dysfunction with a hatred of women and being extremely introverted and withdrawn. Regarding erectile dysfunction, the police made this speculation from the first case. The little white shoes didn't get successfully raped sperms were not found in her vagina despite the blood stain on her thigh and her clothes being taken off. The same happened in some of the following cases where some were raped while others were not. Literally, with the intention to rape those women, his ED problems let him gave up. The details of these unsolved crimes were published on the internet. There were many discussions and analyses online trying to help solve the cases. A Chinese famous BBS called Tianya BBS had a lot of users discussing it, gathering enormous details and the latest clues. A post with the title, Summary of the Latest Information About Baiyin Serial Killer, The Murdered Will Be Caught Eventually, was a super hot topic in this BBS. It had more than 60,000 replies and 5 million views. It suggested that the Baiyin Serial Killer case had drawn immense public attention. Some pros in this forum post below explained their speculations, and they received a lot of recognition including recognition from criminalists. Some of their speculations later proved to be consistent with the truth. According to the manager of Tianya BBS, some users kept following this topic over a decade, providing many perspectives on solving the case. There was also someone who had left an anonymous post claiming to be the serial killer, listing all the details, including those that were not revealed and depicting his motive. This post was considered as a confession of the murderer. Despite the online buzz, the suspect ceased his criminal activities in 2002, which could not stop people from speculating that the killer might pass away. In 2016, after several years of silence, the police finally made a breakthrough in the case and captured the suspect. During these years, eight police chiefs had served in Baiyin. The police officer responsible for the case had become completely gray-haired. The suspect was Gao Chengyong, a 52-year-old man who was born in Lanzhou, the capital city of Gansu province. He committed the first crime when he was 24, just as investigators had inferred. Gao Chengyong was the youngest of seven siblings and grew up in poverty after losing his parents at an early age. He was an introvert who rarely spoke and his ambition to become a pilot was shattered when he failed the selection process due to not meeting the requirements. After leaving his hometown to find work, he rarely returned except during the spring festival. Despite spending years evading the police, he managed to live safely in Bayin City, where he was known for his quiet and introverted nature, which made it hard to believe he could be responsible for such brutal crimes. Despite the DNA and fingerprint samples left at the crime scene not being helpful to the police in unraveling the mystery 10 years ago, they became useful at the moment when genetic technology was widely used and the database was enriched. A distant relative of Gao was detained for a law violation, and the police took his DNA sample and inserted it into the database. 
The system immediately reported that the Y chromosome of this man was highly correlated to the Bayin serial killer. The police soon investigated the man's family tree and checked every family member's DNA, and their efforts were not in vain. Finally, they discovered the truth. Gao was caught in his own grocery store in Baiyin City. He was an ordinary looking man with two grown children, both of whom had decent jobs. His eldest son was very intelligent and had the best grades in his class. He attended a top class university and worked as a designer in an aircraft design institute after graduating. Gao Cheng Yong claimed that he had given up committing crimes in 2002 because he was afraid that his son's future might be influenced if he was caught. Furthermore, he found it difficult to control his victims in his last two crimes due to his age and lack of strength. Knowing the consequences of his actions, Gao Cheng Yong didn't offer much resistance when he was caught, and he apologized to all the families he had hurt. After the trial, he was found guilty of murdering and raping 11 females and was sentenced to death by the court. His sons changed their names when they were told that their father was a serial killer, and they refused to have any contact with him while he was detained. Gao Cheng Yong must have regretted what he had done, but it was too late. On January 3, 2019, Gao Cheng Yong was executed, ending his evil life to console those lives that he has deprived many years ago.